Hello everybody, um, so tonight we are going to talk about a super important topic of the future of food and specifically how that relates to uh, this region right here, uh, essentially Pakistan. Um, this is, uh, and man, before I get going on this, uh, I kind of wanted to say, you know, I, I wanted to talk about this as soon as possible. I, I almost burst into absolute tears. I just couldn't, I just couldn't even talk about this. It was just so, um, you know, we're all responsible for what has happened here on our planet. Um, and, uh, you know, the food problem, uh, it's just unbelievable um, how bad the situation uh, is. Um, so, uh, basically, if you're interested in what's really going on, um, you have to start looking at India and China uh, in particular uh, in terms of food on our planet. So I, I just wanted to say to everybody that, you know, essentially we got to try to stay really, uh, I don't know what the word is in some other language, but there, there needs to be a lot of uh good spiritual energy about what we're trying to do here um, i'm not going to just you know sob on camera the whole time here and just look at the absolute worst everything um, certainly we're going to look at the situation and try to see uh, exactly what we can do um it's uh you know, it's 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 extremely important for us to to understand uh, the situation here. So, so and also, uh, I wanted to say I have a couple of these documents uh, that I've been working on for months, uh, discussing all the details. This particular document is 130 pages. Uh, it goes through a lot of details about the food situation, particularly in Pakistan. Uh, Bangladesh, India, and Asia. Um, so there's just a ton of information here. Um, I don't know why it's all not loading. Um, and then a new document that I'm working on uh, that basically outlines uh, specific details uh, that we're going to talk about tonight for Pakistan. Um, here is a night view image of what is going on uh, in terms, and it's actually a cross section. Um, and this particular region is Pakistan and this is actually India here so there's just a lot of details uh, that I really want to get into I don't know exactly what we're going to be able to look at specifically um, we want to the other thing I really wanted to emphasize is that this is about farming um, as I biked back to my apartment to, tonight uh, I realized that we absolutely have to focus the conversation on farming and sustainability. So if you're familiar with some things, uh, even in the United States, uh, a lot of people are saying that, uh, you know, maybe it's not sustainable here in the U.S. Uh, and certainly we got to focus on making sure that uh, Pakistan, India and Bangladesh is sustainable, meaning all the food essentially comes from the region there locally uh, at least supports its own weight in terms of population so that's kind of where the conversation needs to go and that's where i'm hoping to discuss here and there is hope for sure in uh farming uh even multi-level farming um so and agriculture so uh, here's some more maps, uh, basically, and we're going to try to look at some of the seasonal planting schedule uh, in Pakistan as well as in India and some of the climate in terms of the region here as well as the water stress map. Uh, this map uh, is not necessarily 100% accurate, but it gives you some idea. And then here's India's farming schedule as well. Uh, and then the general farming structure for the whole region uh, I wanted to look at. And I can't emphasize enough, uh, a lot of people, uh, the situation is so bad that a lot of people just want to essentially leave the country, die, kill themselves. It's a very bad situation uh, here. So, uh, you know, the port of Karachi becomes a very important port in this whole discussion um, because so much uh, is actually imported uh, into uh, the region in terms of food. 
I wanted to look at some specific farm regions. Here is a rice farming region in Pakistan. Uh, here is a mango area uh, of farming. And then I wanted to specifically look at the dams and the rivers in Pakistan, as well as some fruit farming. Here's kind of a map of what that fruit farming looks like. And then also some other farms uh, in different parts of the region specifically. And then kind of look at uh, what the important months are to think about in terms of planting and harvesting and growing the crops. Um, and then here's more of a general map showing that. So uh, I might have to cut this conversation quick uh, because uh, there's a lot more to this than what I'm making out here. Um, and I don't want to mess up the conversation at all because there's extreme pressure right now for food uh, and getting a real solution immediately. So these are a lot of details uh, that I've looked at and each detail uh, requires significant amount of thought and thinking about it. So, uh, but basically, I'm just going through some of these slides to show you all the stuff that to potentially we need to talk about, uh, and uh, and how the the region really uh, is significant to look at here. So, um, so let's first of all look at why uh, Pakistan is important in the whole uh, situation here. Um, so if you look at a map of our planet, um, you basically start to understand how important the Himalayan mountain region is. Um, and there's kind of a divider here, a three-way split between uh, heading off to Europe, uh, this heading into Southeast Asia, and this actually heading up into Russia. Um, so this region right here, uh, Kashmir, um, there's basically, if you're not familiar, there's a major river right here, the Indus River, and then the Ganges River uh, heading down here uh, all the way through to Bangladesh. So it splits, uh, and one country is actually this river, and a separate country is this river, and then a third country, Bangladesh, right in here. So there's actually Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh in here, and then Myanmar right here. Um, but uh, basically, this region kind of becomes the focal point uh, for population and for pretty much everything in this region all centers up here. And this is split between Pakistan and India. And that basically means New Delhi, Islamabad, and Lahore over here. So there are people absolutely screaming for food tonight uh, as we talk right now. So this is very important to end this conversation as quickly as possible um, and actually get to actually helping someone in specific. So I wanted to kind of divide this up into a couple different regions so you can see uh, what's going on. But basically, uh, give me one second. So the population is absurdly great in this region. First of all, we're talking about uh, more than a billion people. Uh, and that is actually a lot part in Pakistan and then India in this valley and Bangladesh here. Uh, but this is the focus here. Uh, the farming region here uh, is primarily this lighter color soil. And you can see right in here, this is the northern part of Pakistan, the southern part of Pakistan, and then a special region right in here that I circled. And I wanted to get even more detail for you to kind of get you uh, an overall regional view. So you can kind of see that this region, yes, is very important uh, to both India and Pakistan. Um, and then there's a valley in here that's extremely important, another valley here in Bangladesh on this side. Now on this side, you basically have Iraq, Iran, and Egypt. Uh, and then actually Myanmar and Thailand. And what I wanted to stress right here is that this small region right here, that little area of farmland feeds 10% of all of Africa. Africa has almost a, a more, almost more than a billion people now. Um, so that's 10, that's basically 1 million, 100 million people is that size. So you can feed 100 million people with essentially a lot of land like that right so that kind of is the benchmark i would say is using cairo and the uh, delta there as a understanding for what we can do in terms of productivity uh in the region and that is 
very important to understand and you can see how important um, Iraq is here and actually Iran in this picture as well and here's an overall population map of the planet and you can see right here this is Pakistan this is Bangladesh and then India being in the center here and actually China out here and actually some red regions out in here which we have Indonesia actually being heavily populated as well as the Philippines and then how this may relate to East Africa and West Africa as well as North Africa so I can get into some other details uh, maybe later on this discussion as well so let's first of all uh, you know the situation uh, is about getting through there now uh, this instant right um, and basically what's part of the problem is that uh, this is a lot of distance uh, between uh, Lahore and Karachi um, but what I wanted to emphasize is that it's not a complete uh, road trip here and actually that's why sustainability is super important here um, and even how this relates out to Afghanistan uh, kind of through this northern region we'll hopefully get into some details there but you could see in this how important Lahore is uh, actually to all of Pakistan um, but it's actually not really considered a farming city so we kind of have to zoom in here and see specifically where the farming situation is so again here I've kind of broke Pakistan up into three sections and actually even sectioned off part of India into Pakistan um, as a vital area to share food so actually this area of Rajasthan uh, becomes very important uh, to the future of both Pakistan and India and even out to Africa so if India and Pakistan can't learn to share food in Rajasthan how can they expect to share food for example in East Africa so uh, and then this middle section is actually the most important section um, because it's the middle part of the river so up in here yes the farmland is better but actually the agriculture in this region is very critical um, because a lot of that actually needs to head out into Afghanistan. So there's actually almost a road blockade right now between Pakistan uh, and, and Afghanistan. Um, so it's almost impossible to get food uh, through this region. So actually this formerly was a very easy region to get food through, but not anymore. So actually they, they may have to go some roundabout ways. Uh, and then this whole region right in here, uh, Basically, Bangladesh, Myanmar uh, being extremely important uh, for farming as well. Uh, so one of the absurd questions um, is that solving the problem in Pakistan is actually about solving the problem in Afghanistan. Um, so that's a hard, hard point to really appreciate um, because the situation is really bad in Pakistan, but it's like unbelievably bad in Afghanistan. So, uh, basically what's going on here is New Delhi is here. New Delhi passes the problems to Islamabad. Islamabad says it's Afghanistan's fault. And actually the solution uh, is the exact opposite, right? So, so actually this is kind of the concept here is that this river, essentially everything goes back into the corner of essentially Pakistan Kashmir and this area right as the river goes up here and you basically get into the corner of the mountains there's also another river that comes down through here so we're actually heading into the harvest season uh, right now so September um, in is basically the critical month uh, for harvesting and and also even replanting of wheat so weeds and some other uh, crops actually become very important at this point so um, and it's really surprising how different that crop schedule is for India you can see here um, it actually is October uh, the start of the harvesting uh, right here and then April or even May it's actually a little bit later um, in the season so you're probably sitting there saying that there's this is a really bad situation and um, what can I do about it what can you do about it 
right? Um, and how do we get solving this immediately? Um, and I 100% agree with you on that. Um, and uh, actually here, uh, you know, th there's... A so to really get to that solution, um, we have to look right at the actual uh, source of the river here. Um, so what I want to do is look at that with you on a map here and you can see exactly what we're talking about, right? So you can see that in India, this region called Punjab is the most productive region of farming in all of India. Um, second to maybe in China. Um, so this region is actually Pakistan um, and that is... Uh, extremely important farmland right so these river systems right here are basically the uh, the whole key to what we're trying to see so uh, basically what's happened here uh, is that the farmland is primarily here uh, in India and as a result uh, people have moved both directions. They've moved up into the hills and they've also moved towards the farmland here, basically making Lahore uh, kind of that main uh, capital region outside of New Delhi. So Delhi, New Delhi is basically over here, um, but this Lahore basically becomes the farming capital for this whole region uh, right here, as well as this city in India and Punjab. Um, so the situation is very bad uh, where I live as well uh, for housing um, and uh, you know also for elderly and uh, even food is uh, difficult for some people. Um, now what I would say that we've been talking about here uh, in our country is minimizing the footprint essentially of housing. Um, and as you can see, pretty much every area, all these uh, areas here that are not green are basically housing areas. So, uh, you know, basically rethinking about that is, is the key part of the game. Okay, so now we're kind of going to change the direction entirely of the topic um, and still try to look because the situation is so bad um, that essentially we have to like rethink about everything. So um, and that's basically what this document is attempting to do. Um, so we just had like wasted uh, all of our time uh, essentially talking about things uh, in a way that, that will not be part of the solution uh, maybe at all. Um, so, uh, what actually is the solution uh, might be very different. Um, so what I'm looking at here is the imports. Uh, and you can see that actually a lot of that solution uh, has been from Indonesia. In fact, 30% of the imports have been from Indonesia. And actually quite a lot are from uh, the Americas and particularly Brazil and South America. So... Uh, what we have been looking at um, is essentially, uh, you know, a ginormous, uh, so uh, rather than being super angry, uh, we need to kind of look at this in totally different terms uh, of what we can do um, about the situation. So uh, basically, uh, what we have to do is first see how that the situation uh, rather like we could be in even a worse situation than we are right now um, there are other parts of the Middle East uh, that are far worse off uh, and yet uh, have more prosperity uh, than in Pakistan right for instance uh, Dubai uh, in the Middle East uh, there is actually no farmland uh, or very little farmland unless it's completely uh, made from uh, outside sources. So uh, they have ginormous cities here, and in fact, 
the busiest flights out of Pakistan are to Dubai and the Middle East. Uh, so why aren't people flying? So even the solution that people are looking for uh, in Pakistan and in Asia is completely unrealistic. Uh, they're looking for a solution that's way different than anything we can comprehend here. So uh, that's why it's important to start looking at this whole question. Uh, and, I, and I'm really sorry for the English right now. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I definitely do not want to be speaking in English at all in this conversation. So uh, the rest of this hopefully will not be in any intelligible language, English, or anything like that. Um, and uh, you know the situation is 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 just out out of this uh, world. So um, you know, basically, uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, think about it uh, from a totally different perspective. Like, why do people want to go um, visit this region at all? Right? It, it's absolutely terrible for some people, and other people would say it's very interesting. Um, well, it turns out that Mount Everest. Uh, is over here and these are the tallest mountains in the world um, and uh, actually a lot of people have have kind of forgotten uh, because it's been almost absolute hell uh, living in some of these areas um, and they pretty much uh, don't even want to be there um, so uh, a lot of people uh, are trying to even leave uh, the region um, and yet uh, other people are finding uh, interesting reasons uh, uh, and this this mountain range, as you can see, uh, actually has quite a lot of earthquakes. Uh, there's a lot of uh, volcanic activity in this region, uh, and being 30,000 foot uh, mountains, uh, or almost 30,000 feet, uh, this whole region right here and on this corner uh, has some unbelievable significance in terms of how our planet works. So uh, whether you believe it or not, uh, you have to start thinking about uh, these kind of things uh, for the planet. So, so one of the absurd things is that uh, they put billions of dollars uh, into uh, things that don't have anything related to do with food uh, in a similar region uh, down here in South America. It's in Chile, northern Chile, and it's actually very dry. Uh, there's perhaps no other region that's more similar to Afghanistan uh, then uh, the ESO Observatory, um, and it turns out that's where uh, they put all these big telescopes. Um, and they did that because that's one of the best places to look uh, deep into the universe. Um, and it's actually slightly on the south, it's south of the equator. Now, uh, it turns out that this region is actually north of the equator, and we don't have necessarily any major telescope project uh, in this region. Now, if you're starving for food tonight, um, you know, unfortunately, part of the problem here is that no one, uh, people have to have really, they want to have reasons to help you beyond just getting you food. And that's unfortunate. Um, I, I think, you know, we should just try to get you some food. Um, but unfortunately, that's, there's, a, there's other reasons that have to happen as well. And and certainly do not listen to me about what I think about this. Uh, you know, the priority is to try to get uh, you food and healthy and uh, not listening to this online. So sooner that you can stop listening to this, the better. Um, you know, shake it. You just walk around and think about something else. You don't have to be sitting there listening to me at all. Um, the goal is to really think about the universe about God and about how to get along here uh, and certainly not listen to me. So um, this is an example of a mobile uh, radio telescope uh, actually that has been built. Uh, and you can see it actually looks quite similar to uh, Afghanistan and Kashmir and some other areas. Um, and actually here's a, here's a view of the center of our galaxy. I, for the first time last night, I uh, got a chance to look at the center of our galaxy uh, through a telescope, and uh, I'll maybe go into that a little bit here in more detail. But uh, but India, so we, we live on this strange planet where there's this strange point here, uh, India, um, and we really don't have any reason why uh, this point exists. Uh, it's pointing mysteriously south. 
um, it's uh, definitely uh, it's definitely very focused, uh, and we really haven't figured it out um, why this this exists. We have um, essentially this Tibetan plateau here, um, all uh, with huge mountains, uh, and then not really uh, pretty flat, relatively flat India here. You can see another point here, another point here, and some other details. But I'll zoom out onto the Earth here so you can get a picture of this here. So all this points essentially to Antarctica. Um, and you can see here uh, that we have the essentially this tall area here, uh, the, the highest on the planet, and there's people trying to move up there. So if you really think about what's been going on in Pakistan, like we've kind of forgotten, uh, you know, whether you live in Bangladesh, uh, the tip of India, Sri Lanka, or wherever, a lot of people actually have tried to go up into these mountains and live up in these mountains. Um, there's millions and millions of people, uh, and that, <laughs> that has actually become a billion people, right? So we have essentially a billion people up in this region, uh, and uh, and it's basically actually killed off all the wildlife um, and done some terrible things to the planet. Um, and meanwhile, we, we don't really have any spiritual reason for what's been going on on the planet. Uh, you can see that there's even more activity happening here. Um, but if I zoom in, you can start to see uh, some of the details here. So, so here's kind of that perspective of India. Um, and then if you flip the map on the opposite side you can start to see the importance of this area of afghanistan and pakistan and the himalayas here and um you know again getting food into this region is not easy so and also having it be sustainable right so it's crazy because these people are living up in these mountains uh, and uh, you know pretty much willing to die to live uh, in this region and, and 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 in some sense this could be kind of the uh like off earth capital uh of our planet um that's a very important discussion to have um so if you zoom out uh on this map let me get a different map here to show you uh but if we zoom out here you start to see that the middle east this point here is actually halfway uh between uh Europe and Asia, right, and and actually even up into the mountain range in here, uh, this all converges. And this map is not, uh, it's not a sphere like this, right. So, uh, but the point here is that this region is very um, is very historic um, for everything uh, here, right. So. Basically, as as people have traveled through the thousands of years uh, between Asia and Europe, and even Africa, uh, this whole region has kind of split. You you kind of have this pathway up here, uh, heading all the way up, up up this way, and then we have this way all the way down here. Uh, and the Middle East has generally been considered <coughs> the point halfway in between the East and West, uh, with actually little thought of of America right we didn't really even know about America at all and and it turns out that 10% of the food uh, in Pakistan actually comes from the United States or even uh, South America right uh, Brazil specifically um, and so uh, you know we're trying to figure out what in the heck are we doing here on this planet um, why are people struggling at all um, and we have enough food uh, to feed everyone. We have, um, you know, plenty of great things that we can do on our planet. But we have a lot of uh, people uh, living in absolute terrible conditions. So uh, that terrible <laughs> conditions, some people say, is the Middle East. But it also turns out that, um, like like we saw down here, um, this actually is is the best place in the world to do astronomy. Um, and it turns out um, that uh, you know there there hasn't really been uh, an understanding uh, of how the planet works uh, until very recently. Until basically we, we had this discussion right now. So 
we're basically talking about this discussion uh, that may change everything, uh, including the capital of our planet, right? Uh, Afghanistan, uh, specifically being the capital of our planet. So this is kind of a crazy discussion to have because you might be sitting back and say, oh, I live in my country and, you know, we've never really had a capital of the entire Earth um, explained to us clearly um, and the importance of getting food there and living there uh, in a reasonable way. Um, and this is the offer of capital, right? So we're not even really talking about the capital of our planet. We're actually talking about leaving our planet soon, going to the moon and other planets. And we don't want to have uh, wars uh, and, and serious problems. And it turns out that Afghanistan actually has had a significant amount of conflict. Um, and maybe that conflict is a little bit uh, more mysterious and important than we've uh, realized here. So... Uh, again, you can kind of see this is the geology here, um, kind of going off into this weird region uh, here. So, uh, and uh, definitely there's crops, so different types of crops that we need to think about uh, as we get up into different altitudes uh, and different levels of, of dryness uh, in the mountains there. So, here you can see there's a region actually north. Of even this region that heads out so that's one of the splits uh, this this region actually has a significant amount of farming and um, so it's it's actually possible to work with this northern part and that's actually how uh, Afghanistan gets a lot of their food is up through these this this whole ridge here and that becomes a very um, cross-border uh, international region um, as well so and then here you can kind of see how this fault line uh, starts to be significant uh, for Africa so if you, if you see right here this whole river region follows right through here and actually heads into East Africa so and you can see another fault splitting off here and then a third one heading out into the Red Sea so this is an important question because now it starts to become important for all of India to say, well, if India wants to work with essentially the rest of the world, uh, they have to go through Pakistan, right? And if India wants to work through with Africa, this is the route essentially to do that if you start believing things about the earth in terms of uh, the geology and use that to help guide uh, what you're trying to do. And here you can see that northern route heading all the way up into Lake Bacall and uh, uh, certainly this lake uh, this lake believe it or not is bigger than the all the Great Lakes combined so that even though it looks small in this image it is extremely important so this whole region actually brings us all the way up to this freshwater region in Russia um, and it gets extremely cold up here um, it's almost impossible to swim in the water in the summertime uh, even so uh, but this whole region you can see kind of heads out that way in there so so again uh, this is a, a quite a quite a discussion here that I wanted to have with you um, now um, again uh, you know there's uh, it's really important for us to have fun and make sure this conversation is not just absolute uh, hell, uh, and, uh, you know, basically with Earth, you know, it, it's really not just about our generation, it's about the kids, and trying to think about how to get um, younger people involved in farming. Uh, if you plant a tree, for instance, it's it's not going to be for you, it's going to be for someone after you. Um, so... That means it's very important to look at, at, at the farming for kids and younger people in particular. particularly. Uh, and then also, I looked at some most critical farms around the Earth. Um, and as we look at the entire planet, um, you know, this region obviously is very critical. And uh, let me just go jump back into uh, the FAO map here and show you. So... So basically, this is all farmland, right? And that means this is the, this is probably the largest farming region on our planet continuously, uh, with such population and 
uh, everything. So, uh, so again, this is a very difficult topic for me to do. Um, no one, I mean, who's talking about this, right? Um, I, I, I certainly do not want to have to sit here on video camera and talk about this. Um, you know, it's it's extremely embarrassing and terrible um, because this is really, uh, you know, uh, I live very far away from this situation. Um, but uh, you know, we we have a, a major, major, <laughs> major problem here, um, and and we all need to try to take understand what's going on. So, uh, anyways, so. Uh, you can kind of see that there's different points along the river here uh, that are very important. And before you start saying, oh, hey, well, this river doesn't matter, this river doesn't matter, there's actually only a few major rivers on our planet of these size, right? So this river running here, this river running here, uh, the Yellow River and the Shenzhen River, and then uh, there's a river down through here. Uh, there's another river through here, and then there's uh, a smaller river down in here. But um, essentially, these are very big rivers, um, and you can see the length of this is is approximately the length of the Nile. And you can see right here the Nile River um, essentially starts to really get into the desert here, and it's essentially about the same length uh, as the Nile River. Um, and there is a whole bunch of other river systems up in Russia that you definitely should know about. However, this happens to go through a warm part of our planet where we can actually grow things pretty easily. So, and again, you can see that just that small little delta there is 10, feeds 10% 10 of Africa, or essentially 100 million people. So you can start to say uh, that, use that as a guide there. So Cairo is extremely important in this whole uh, discussion. So. I hope this conversation gets even more absurd um, that you start to completely get off the planet in terms of everything with your thinking. So uh, some of the topics in here are like way, way far out. So uh, and, uh, you know, that's kind of like how we have to start thinking about everything, right? Because we just have, uh, you know, so many people here. And so many different things going on. So, here's some details of the cities uh, in Pakistan. So you can start to see Karachi, uh, and then some of the structure of Lahore, and how that actually heads out into Afghanistan, uh, up into the hills. Um, so here you can kind of see um, the similarity between East Africa and this little region right in here uh, in terms of the soil, right? So, uh, and then how essentially northern India starts to be similar to this corner up in here, which is basically Ethiopia. Um, and here's Bangladesh, so you can start to see Calcutta on one side and Bangladesh, and this is on the opposite side of that river. So, when we look at this river system, you know, when we're trying to understand our planet, uh, this split here this three-way split this river this river and then another river through here this is not just any river system because of the mountain range here uh, and some other things so and further on one side you know, you basically have Africa, and then on this opposite side, we basically have Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, and the rest of, of uh, these islands. And this actually becomes extremely important for the uh, coral reefs and some other fishing zones and, and some other things. So I hope you're at least getting really pissed off or upset and wanting to kind of do your own homework here because this is um you know there's there's just so much so much detail here to look at um and kind of making it comprehensible is is very difficult right because think about it, we have billions of people on this planet trying to make any sense of this is is going to be extremely difficult um so uh 
you know, the air pollution is also something to think about, as well as the uh, map for the... Uh, th this actually gets into looking at nuclear power um, in the region uh, and where uh, there may be actually some significant problems uh, in terms of the air quality as well as the water. So um, there's a discussion on that as well. So, and then and then specifically how to work with East Africa it's on the opposite side of this. So again, uh, mysteriously, this, this region all connects in through here, right? So, and I want to kind of like what, let you take a question about how the universe might work for a moment um, and take a really far look at this and ask you, you know, so like how does this work? Like how are we connected to the universe? Is the Middle East somehow in the middle of something important here that we should think about and um, and as you can see africa's on this side russia in this part and then basically you got our iran and afghanistan right in here in this region right as well as uh, a whole another separate kind of island area and even this uh, region here where you have antarctica essentially chasing australia so uh, it really raises the question, you know, why have we been having all these conflicts in the Middle East um, uh, over over even the thousands of years, right? So um, people have been trying to get across uh, from Europe or even from Asia as far as Australia. Uh, and basically this middle point has been a huge, huge point uh, in that journey, right? So when you get in and when you follow this river up into the mountains uh you basically end in this in this very mysterious place uh which is kyber pass um heading off into uh essentially afghanistan right and and the mysterious part of this is that we have these um two uh, what i'm calling the electromagnetic field eyes on either side of this right we have this huge conflict right now in Ukraine with this island right here uh, and who controls that, right? So one interesting proposal is is, is to just stop the war um, and uh, give up and essentially uh, do something totally different uh, in the Black Sea compared to the Caspian Sea, right? It's a, it's a vertical sea here and a, you know, a horizontal sea here um, and basically look at a way to maybe even swap uh, things uh, you know you can see this little lake here almost being the same size as this and maybe a missing piece uh, right here in Azer Azerbaijan um, but the farming in this region is is absolutely critical right um, for Iran uh, I, I've looked at the details on this and there's just hours of discussion on all these topics um, and I'm really sorry to be doing this discussion tonight. Uh, I'd like to, um, you know, but and 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 I and I don't want to take too much uh, of your time, and also uh, let you uh, un understand this about what what potentially is important here. So, um, so again. Uh, how is everything? So I, I just want to ask you a question. You know, like how, how, how what, what's going on on our planet here? Like why? Uh, how did this all happen? You know, and like what, what are the details that we need to think about uh, in terms of food and survival? Um, and and here's some other regions uh, within Pakistan uh, that basically show some details. Now you can start to see. Uh, more about how uh, essentially so, so so one of the reasons I, I looked at this so carefully is because I want to understand Africa right and uh, this region of Pakistan is basically the border region to that understanding right and linking how any kind of perspective of our whole planet uh, if you're interested in how everything works together uh, how that basically links off into Africa uh, looking at very practical things like food as well as wildlife, right? So we basically have a big accident here in India where all the wildlife has essentially been <laughs> kicked out um, and it's basically now only really in the Congo 
uh, and there's some uh, regions here and as well as along Western India but uh, you know it, and so like you know if you want to get to know earth here uh, you kind of got to see the transition points between each region right so you know you see you have this kind of fault line here but this fault line actually runs perpendicular to the wind pattern going across here so there's just a ton of information to think about but uh, what I'm trying to say is that um, there's there's other weird things going on here like if you're really having a bad time in Pakistan and man it's been terrible or even in the Middle East well what about getting out of that whole region and just going to Central America there's a lot of people that look just like these people in Central America right um, and it's just such a hard journey to get over there and people have died uh, trying to even listen to me about doing things um, so hopefully not um, and uh, uh you know, it, 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 it's uh, it's really about a gradual progress here um, and trying to figure out what's going on. So, um, and uh, yeah, so there's there's just a huge question uh, because uh, the population actually is is uh, getting out into the islands here, which is where the wildlife should be. So. Again, this is kind of looking at, at a couple different factors here, right? We have this loop in here, and then we have this other piece down here, and then we have the tip of India, as well as a whole separate region coming up from Antarctica. Uh, and then here is a very weird part, uh, basically called uh, Rajasthan, right? And uh, that, basically looking at several perspectives of that, um, of that puzzle here uh, in between kind of the coastline of India and Karachi and Mumbai so uh, and then this is kind of looking at some of these uh, most important farms on our planet right so it actually turns out that it's on the other side here uh, in Bangladesh uh, and then actually this whole region that, that, that Pakistan is pointing to is actually Western or Eastern Africa, right? Uh, and looking at how that uh, that farmland actually is uh, connected. Um, and then there's just so many details uh, in each one of these regions. So here's a particular area um, along this route here. So... Um, as well as the finance so uh now these these lakes in the northern part uh, are actually not in uh are north of india and everything right so this this region up here um you know there is a lot of water up here um and uh as you can see well, earthquake activity and that all heads up through here heading up into lake bacall into that region there so basically um it still doesn't it still doesn't it's still this is still a central piece of the puzzle but this is part of the uh gypsy journey that a lot of people wanted to do um essentially to to understand our planet right um and that um that that's one direction here so uh certainly uh this pathway is 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 different <laughs> than the other ones so so there's definitely a lot of details around each one of those lakes um i tried to look into some of those uh, so you can see and here's lake bacall uh heading out into the atmosphere there and then on the opposite side how that may be related to the Persian Gulf. So <clears throat> essentially what we're trying to look here at is how, you know, the there's, you know, hundreds of millions of people that live all around in here and how this, uh, this region actually is connected and makes sense in, in some kind of way <clears throat> um, to this all, to this piece here. So, I'm not going to get into the whole lot of details here. I really need to get into some more details here. But essentially, this is starting to look at the other 
um, side, right? So this is looking at <coughs> Malaysia and Sumatra and seeing how um, <coughs> that region um, is related here. Um, and here you can start to see how <coughs> maybe even Islamabad <coughs> and this corner may be related to the Andaman Islands. Um, so this is really a jump in understanding of the entire region, right? If this, if these two areas are connected, um, it completely redefines um, how we think about our planet Earth, right? And further, if the Andaman Islands are connected to the Windward Islands in the Caribbean, um, so that's quite a big jump there um, of understanding. So basically what we've been trying to understand uh, is how one side of the Earth is connected to the opposite side of the Earth, right? And that's that's a huge leap in understanding um, of everything, right? So this whole region, like, how how is that connected to the Caribbean, for instance, right? So these little pieces of the puzzle um, basically help us to start <coughs> uh, understanding that. So uh, that was a huge piece here. Now, here you can see this uh, area of Sumatra um, and Jakarta, right? And uh, basically, uh, that, that's like an unbelievable place. So, um, yeah, my mom was actually born here in Jakarta. But, uh, but the weird thing about this is that this whole region, uh, if, you, uh, if you look at the map, let's try to look at some of these maps here. I'll zoom out and start to see what's going on. So there, there's, a, there's this mysterious problem because this whole this whole region this uh, this uh, this triangular region kind of heads out points out across the sea here all the way down to this guy right here and this guy this island here actually is the focal point for the all of India right so now we're starting to see on this, and I'm sorry that this is kind of all messed up, but you can see this fault line heading all the way down the island, and then mysteriously hitting this island here, which may one day be the capital of Antarctica. And uh, yeah, and I'm really sorry to talk about all this tonight um, and relate this back to food, but um, uh, you know, basically one piece of the puzzle starts to come together and then we basically put we're, we're going to try to put the entire puzzle of earth together here so uh uh and understand what it means spiritually right um you know to uh and the really the really weird thing about all this is that um india to a large extent is about reincarnation um and that's a huge part of the puzzle of Earth. Now, the, the ironic thing is that if we compare uh, what India is trying to do, you know, obviously this is a major aspect of gravitational fields, electromagnetic fields, everything of our planet. India is kind of converged on that, but look at the size of Africa, right? So that's why we're trying to get clear understanding of what, what Africa is really doing, right? We have so much wildlife here. Like we've really looked at, worked on human reincarnation in India. That's one of the, the big topics in uh, their spirituality. Uh, and, uh, you know, certainly how that may be related to other religions, uh, you know, certainly everyone wants to live a long time. Um, and that makes India a big priority in understanding um, because they've been working on that for so long. So, um, and then how even Africa, what what Africa might be really working on, is even more ginormous. So, uh, and 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 not to say even what what these islands are working on here, right? And and even Antarctica down here, right? So we have Antarctica down here, uh, kind of chasing <laughs> Australia here. And this thing is sending back to the uh, magnetic south pole, and then you can see New Zealand sending something out into space almost. Right? You can see this uh, 
this whole uh, boot kind of booting off something into space out to Hawaii here and then actually heading up almost into this little like a sport like some kind of universal sport uh, trying to pass something through the uh, all the way back to the North Pole so uh, and then actually a fault line heading all the way down here this fault line heading down through right here this is this this little island here is at Iceland and heading all the way back down a very now this fault line looks a little bit not so straight but if you are to look at it compared to the other fault lines on our planet I'm sorry to spin you around like this but this fault line actually divides what was the what was it at one time you know this is the most what we where we you know where people were kind of used to on earth so uh, and then heads all the way back down south and then kind of <laughs> goes into Antarctic again so uh, anyway so how do we get going on this conversation so uh, what we're trying to do is understand our universe and, and feed people here on our planet um, and if this is the Middle East if this is the middle of like everything um, on our planet um, I mean I mean, you don't have to call it the Middle East if you don't want, but most people call it the Middle East, and uh, that means it's it, this this landmass here. There, there's essentially, in my in my book, there's you know essentially this, this is a huge huge part of the landmass here, and then there's basically North America and South America. So we got North America, South America, and then we got Antarctica, right? So. And then actually Australia kind of comes into the picture too here, right? As well as right here you have uh, this whole this whole island area I call Oceania, but uh, but you can see here, you know, just the number of earthquakes going on. How absurd this is! So uh, and this is extremely dangerous. So anyway, so. Uh, Let's go back over to the other side of this uh, here for a, a second here because, yeah, we're supposed to be talking about food, but, like, this whole region here on the opposite side, uh, this Caribbean region, um, you know, what, what we were originally talking about is how this region, potentially the Windward Islands, were connected to the opposite side of the planet, right? This region right in here. Andaman Islands, right? So now, and then if the Andaman Islands are connected to this region, right, which is basically Pakistan, so, and Afghanistan, which is basically, and then basically this shows a, a disorientation. The, the nice part about this is it doesn't show a perfect, it doesn't necessarily, it, it's not like the center of all this the center of all this was directly connected necessarily or not necessarily to the Middle East, right? And maybe someday we'll start to understand how different parts of our planet like that are connected. So, uh, and even uh, this mountain region here, including Tibet, all the way over to the Caribbean. And let's look at that as an interesting idea. So you can see this whole circular region, it almost doesn't really circle like the Caribbean does. So you can see on the Caribbean side here um, and and here you can see approximately some similar shape to that um, with a very deep cavern. And it turns out that some of these islands are actually taller mountains. Uh, the tallest mountain on our planet is actually Hawaii, right? So but these mountains, including the ocean floor, are actually quite significant. So, uh, but anyway, so going back to this is that, uh, you know, we're still trying to understand this mysterious point here. Right, this this <laughs> point here uh, um, thing. So uh, anyway, so before you get too far off on all these other details, which would be great, <laughs> and actually hopefully you've totally given up on the presentation by now, but there's still a whole lot here. So what I wanted to express to you is that, look at this mysterious island. So 
my my great grandfather was mysteriously on a sailboat during an explosion of volcano in this exact place right here. Here's a picture of it, right? And this all is a very mysterious thing. So I gotta look for my uh, I have a pet cockroach around here. I gotta be careful um, or a praying mantis. Um, and um, anyway, so there's just so many details as you can see on this side as well. So we're trying to bring this all back to the Middle East somehow, right? So the, the, the kind of the uh, the main part of the understanding is how everything on our planet fits together, right? So, like, although you might live here or wherever else in the world, most people are living in India or China, how is that really connected to everything else on our planet, um, both on the supply side and the demand side? Um, so, uh, and again, here you can see more of this uh, concept of what happened, how we're getting even farther into outer space uh, and then some of the major fault lines uh, so one way to think about this is is how the fault lines connect us to different parts of the planet um, and so uh, the dog is yelling at me outside I gotta get off this conversation as soon as possible um, so anyway uh, yeah so I hope I you know what I really tried I'm, I'm actually working on trying to be a little bit uh, funny not so serious i hope i really inspired you that made you think that you can really do this research um i spent many many years looking at a lot of this stuff um i mean this is a hundred and anyway so what i'm trying to say is this though is that you should really uh one of the details before you get into looking at all the details i would definitely say that don't make any mistakes uh what you're studying and make sure you present your presentation about what you think how earth works perfectly and the the truth is is that uh if you're really upset about giving the discussion you're probably completely wrong um like me um but what i would say is that take a look at uh a lot of these factors um and um realize that your perception of how the earth works is going to be really awesome so um and uh again here's a lot more of the uh i added a temperature map into this but uh anyway i'm going to kind of close this up really quick here so there's a lot of details in this document um again uh it really starts from the concept of kind of looking at a universal astronomy farm right so uh as we start to farm in areas or even live in areas that are completely ridiculous and almost off of our planet that's going to be up in these mountains here um, these people have tried to live up in these areas for thousands of years um, and it doesn't it, it, it's almost like living in outer space or on another planet um, so that's one of the reasons why it's super important and getting people interested in uh, living and farming in some of these very difficult regions including the South Pole but this is even at least you're like you know 50 miles from civilization here um, South Pole gets really 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 cold so uh, but so there's a, a whole different concept of, of you know you would have to argue that in modern civilization that this region is very <laughs> significant so in the discussion but I want to take a step back from everything I've said and basically open up the conversation really to like the entire planet, right? So yes, um, I've looked at this region um, and there's a lot of little details here to look at. So uh, maybe my computer's being hacked here and crashed. So essentially what I'm trying to suggest to you is a couple factors um, the food situation is very serious and very we just looked at where the food problem is probably the most serious on the planet right basically the Middle East this area right here where there's desert that's the biggest desert on our planet that's the hardest place to live that's the hardest place to get food to that's and this is the border region for that whole area and what I would say is that definitely these regions get even more complicated and out there 
Um, and we're trying to look at how to solve that problem uh, for millions and millions and billions, perhaps even billions of people, right? This is all across here, so including India. So I'm trying to, uh, but I need to get off the discussion here and I'm going to try to take a walk. Uh, but again, uh, take a look at something that you're super interested in and i'm hoping to leave this conversation to you personally um you know i've done a little bit of my homework here uh it's really fun to look at the way that i looked at the earth and but at the same time uh you know i, I was thinking about this the other day is that there's going to be so many awesome discoveries uh in the future um in the near future 10 years from now 100 years from now 1000 years from now whatever um and no matter what field of farming, the field of farming uh, is still really interesting to me because it's really how we started our, it takes us really far back in terms of sustainability. Um, I just really like the truth of farming. Like if you, know, you live on a farm with some animals, I'm a vegetarian. I don't like to, you know, I, I feel it's really bad to kill an animal. It's a really bad thing. So, but, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, food is is part of that 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 circle of life that really works correctly, and we got to think about it 100%. So that's why I, I looked at this particular problem in Pakistan, in particular, um, and particularly how that might relate to other questions because uh, it's important to collaborate with the astrophysicists, with the mathematicians. With the farmer right um and work to collaboratively uh, together and um that's kind of the important thing is to kind of see um the importance of whatever you're doing so uh and it doesn't necessarily have to be uh looking at the earth this way so and what i would say is i zoom out here um you know the there is big questions about the wildlife right so the big uh, area that we really have not populated on our planet is South America and Africa. Uh, and we have to really think about carefully about what we're doing uh, in a highly populated region like India and China carefully uh, and try to help them out and they can help us out, you know. So, uh, and maybe rethink about why it's really nice to live in an area that people didn't really necessarily want to live in. Um, and uh, how that might really matter. So, um, and uh, because there's a lot of people thinking about leaving this planet, um, even tonight, uh, I know at least one person that wants to commit suicide. So, uh, and that's terrible. So, and we got to figure out how to make this really fun um, and not just sitting here listening to videos like me talk about this so uh anyway so yeah so right so there's 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 a lot going on here and we just looked at one piece of the puzzle but really look at everything like look at something else like in terms of africa like if you live in africa um what is going on here like how does this like w what i tried to explain to you is how one part of the earth is connected to another part of the earth right and so once we understand that once we understand how africa and say south america this piece of the puzzle works together and i just told I explained that there's a wind system that heads down through here to the tip of africa from rio de janeiro for instance right so if you live in if you live in uh, south america right there's all kinds of people that live along the coast here and here how this all is interconnected and even where i live right here you know i was starting to realize some things about where i live how it's connected to central america this whole kind of piece here is all going up to to uh alaska right and eventually up to the north pole um but there's a whole another link here and then a whole another link here and then a whole another so there's tails all the way down through here and then actually above ground tail so as we discussed uh there was this mysterious thing here mysterious thing here mysterious thing here 
mysterious thing here. Ha ha ha. So, what I'm trying to say is that, okay, so this is how there's a whole lot of work to do just in North America, right? And the Caribbean as well. So, uh, and uh, uh, here you can look at the Caribbean. You can see how huge these earthquakes are along Mexico and the rest of Central America. Um, and let's go all the way back to Asia here again. So you can see Australia, and there's a whole lot of work just in Australia and all the details here. So, uh, and I think I'll close here on Australia uh, just because what I would like to really close with is that, you know, what I'm really working on is trying to see about how each, each farm and each person on the planet really is important and interesting. So... You know, because I'm always surprised how awesome people are and everybody in my life. So, anyway, uh, I'm really sorry for this long discussion. Um, but, uh, anyway, hopefully, uh, you know, here in Australia, you know, you can, you can, there's so many details all in Australia, right? And, uh, you know, and, and I would really say that, you know, try to figure out what what's going on for you there um or even in southeast asia or india as we're looking at tonight so and again the food situation if we can get this solved i think there's a lot of people that can live a lot better so don't underestimate that problem like as you start looking at the entire planet and the reason that i wanted to bring this up is because you know some some of my friends um are interested in other stuff besides what i'm interested in so uh and what I wanted to emphasize is that the food situation, if you get that pretty much squared away properly, and the water situation, that's going to be a good, solid foundation for any other kind of thing that you're trying to do here on the planet. So that's why we just looked at the most difficult, one of the most difficult pieces of the puzzle, which is right here in India and also in China. Uh, and I, I think I've already even worked on a couple of details in China as well. But uh, anyway, so... I'll be back in a little bit, uh, take a look at some details, um, and uh, we'll try to talk about them uh, as soon as possible. I'll be right back. Uh, so yeah, I'm about ready to close up this conversation. Um, I just blew my nose and things like this. So uh, I wanted to ask you a serious question. Did you really think my presentation was terrible? I hope so. Um, and I really hope it was the worst thing you've ever heard about for a while. I've done my absolute best. I, I, I promise you to be as boring as possible and just make sure that you will try to do this this other research because I I would rather be just hanging out on a farm and having fun um, and that's why we need your help so uh, to really look at everything here so uh, but uh, yeah so all I wanted to say is that um, yeah if there's anything else uh, trying to take a look at some some things um and uh yeah and, and i wanted to emphasize that again um yeah please try to do some really great uh work here um and uh you know um i'm not uh and let me know if there's some other things that uh you'd like to take a look at and help out with thank you so much see you later yeah and i just wanted to apologize really um you know there's just so much uh details here going on uh if it's been really hard to understand or or almost impossible to understand um you know uh it would be really nice uh to look at this very differently um than the way that we're looking at it right now so um, take a look at some things and try to uh, come up with some ideas um, and I'm gonna go take a walk for a bit and I'll be back as soon as I can see you in a bit
So I got extremely bad news. Um, you know, I walked outside, and uh, the police are right there. And God, maybe I have to actually say more about this topic. Um, anyway, uh, so hold on a second. We've been having a terrible conversation. Like this is the worst. Like. Like, I, I, I feel like we all got to sit here, listen to me talk about this, and, like, like this is education on our planet? Like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I'd rather just go to school than watch a video like this. And, and you know what that video, you know what the real school is going to be? It, it, it's going to be doing what you want and actually going somewhere awesome on the planet to investigate something uh, that we're talking about right now. So... Uh, you know, we just went through 130 pages of this, 40 pages of this. We looked at the river systems, kind of. I mean, I didn't even really explain all the details, but, you know, I mean, there's a river system that heads off this way. There's one that heads off into Kabul and other down into Pakistan. And then we got this whole... God, it looks like something terrible has happened here. That's a city? That looks like an asteroid has landed there. Anyway... We got everything completely farmed out, we discussed. We talked about the rain system. This is a crazy map. It's it's actually a... Uh, shows irrigation. So it's irrigation areas up to uh, a few kilometers uh, per pixel. But uh, we looked at the water levels. Um, and we didn't even really talk... There's just... A, ton, a lot of stuff to talk about, right? So, as you can see, uh, this whole area has water problems. Uh, we're going to have water problems all around the galaxy as well. Uh, if we're actually serious about going somewhere else. Um, we tried to look at some of the population things in the region. As you can see, there's been a lot of activity. Is that the right word for it? Activity? Anyway... Um, we tried to look at the port here specifically to see the direction of the flow here. You can see that that this this flow out here is probably to Africa, and this is actually down into the rest of Asia. So looking at that specific port there, um, and then we looked at the food schedule. Uh, I just wanted to tell you something, like, if you're listening to this and you're, like, a professional researcher that you're paid to do research, that's garbage, man. Guess what? We did a search for farming. There's, like, no research on farming. Current research and astrophysics, like, the stuff that we just talked about, astrophysics and all this other stuff, there's nothing out there. You're listening to the best there is. Um... Go check the details yourself. Uh, so, uh, and we kind of looked at import and export a little bit. I didn't really even go into all the details there, but you can see how important Kenya is. Turns out, man, my friend in Kenya was really struggling, and uh, man, Kenya is actually helping Pakistan and even Afghanistan. Uh, and we tried to look at, ooh, wow, this is slow. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, my whole computer's crashing right now, guys, um, which is great. Probably being hacked. But uh, what I wanted to say is that there is a lot of more information uh, to look at. And the soil map is really important. I think we showed a few geological maps uh, here um, and things. Uh, but what I want to do is take a step back here and try to look at what you're trying to do. Like, take a th think. Like, this is what... I was looking at but quite honestly um, it doesn't take much to just listen to someone like me on a video but uh, when you actually start to make a friend somewhere else in the world or you start to study something in specific where you live uh, and let's just zoom out on this map and it might take a little while to load because there is just millions and millions of pixels of data here so here is the whole entire planet's soil map and 
what you notice here is that if you live, like I got some friends in Florida, and New York, all over the place now. I'm so thankful. I'm not thankful enough yet. So if you're listening to this and you're hearing me from wherever you are, I would love to hear from you. Uh, I'm kind of, I like hearing about problems too. So if there's a very serious problem you got, let me know what it is. And we can try to think about what's going on. Uh, there's just so many people out there. But the wildlife here, you know, we, we I actually started talking for a full week about the wildlife, and that is definitely a conversation that I'm going to continue having. But in South America and also in Africa, that's a huge part of that puzzle. And you can see in Southeast Asia as well as Oceania and also in here, we, not, we haven't even really begun to talk about the ocean and the fish. Um, on the marine traffic map, uh, if I were to zoom out on this, you can start to see all the boats around the planet as well as ports. And I'm going to zoom out that as far as I can so you can see how bad the problem is. That's a lot of boats, right? Uh, so we're talking about fishing. Uh, green here is actually cargo. And red is oil. And pink is actually fishing. And fishing is actually very severely a very big problem. So there's a lot of things to look at. Uh, I never fish. I, I, I'd love to talk to people about fishing sometimes. It's a pretty interesting conversation. But this is the road system. You can see that Pakistan is starting to light up now in terms of traffic jams. Uh, but And then we looked a little bit at the electrical grid as well as the state of the Internet. And I don't think I even discussed this enough, but you can really see here that actually the bias here uh, the western bias of Pakistan's internet and you can see how central Africa is actually going to become as you as you leave as you go into Asia that internet hub actually Pakistan becomes that last point where you uh, basically head out over into Africa um, and then even into, into Europe um, and then I think I looked a little bit at the uh this is a cool map to see because you can see the major airports and where the farming centers are. So you can see this airport here is really important as well as this guy here and some others. But um, the other thing I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you a scary picture that I saw here. And look at this. They just completely burned down everything and put in a farm. This is scary because that's essentially the story of all of India. Uh man i mean there used to be trees there and now it's all farmland and i just want to prove that to you for a moment i want to scare you for a second and show you the actual situation right that's all farm this is all rice farming in pakistan if you zoom out you do the same thing in the united states or anywhere in the world every little square has been taken as a farmland even out in the desert and it's just everything is farmed and you know what? The truth is, over here, that's all farmland. Everything. This is, and we're only looking at a small. Let me zoom out really far. What we just looked at is that piece right there. But guess what? The real truth was that was a small area. Look at Punjab. Punjab entirely farmland. So, and I'm sorry this is loading slowly. It doesn't even get you the picture of it. But there's a good news here. Although this is maybe all farmland, uh, the good news is that these are typically small farms. In the United States, uh, the problem is actually these become big squares and it's like no one owns a farm except for a few people. But in India and in Pakistan, there's a lot of small farmers and that means that they have a lot of people that really know what they're doing that maybe should even leave their country and help farm other places. Uh, because there's so many farm, so many farmlands, and this is all farmed. And and that's, if you zoom in anywhere here, you're going to see a farmland. And you can even do street view as well in a lot of India and Bangladesh. But I want to even scare you further on the map. Remember those farmlands? The blue is farmland. So basically, you can see Europe is perhaps as bad or even worse. And Ukraine was a big part of that puzzle. 
here in China. And it doesn't explain China at all because really on the big map in China you start to see a lot of China's desert right in here. So they basically farmed all of this. So that big blue section that you saw there was all farmland in China as well. So I, I just wanted to really hone in on the farming aspect here. I'm going to try to zoom in and you can see. We'll just zoom in right here and you can see same truth. It's, it's all farmland. And it's definitely a different style. You can see very different style. The population is actually very tight in with the farmland. It's a whole different way of life. Uh, and they actually may be quite good. It looks like they're, they're good at sharing farm in one direction, but not good at sharing it this way. So, you, so it's almost like you see in China, there's like, they don't want to share with Shanghai, essentially. All the farms are kind of going this way. So this this whole river heads out. Uh, it might be the Yellow River, but uh, but you can see this this uh, this northern river is one section here, and then the Shanghai section is out in here. So and then right north of Shanghai, I've been looking at this section here of farmland. Uh, you can see this is really important farmland. It's all farmed. So. That's, that's just scary a little bit and at the same time excite you because uh, some parts of the world really know what they're doing in terms of farming. And that, that's basically India and China. So uh, it definitely does not look like the United States. Uh, and let's, let's just look at the United States really quickly. I had a really fun time looking at Korea too. There's a lot of mountainous farming. And that's why the excitement of the real cool farms actually comes back into this Kashmir region it's not even like Korea because these are 30,000 foot mountains so you have a lot of farms back in here and this whole valley I think I discussed a little bit about it in terms of farming back in here very mysterious valley a lot of pollution actually collects in this valley um, so that's a major solution and problem right there and as well as this dam that I think I looked at some pictures of so there's there's high mountain farming it's some of the best in the world actually so and then here you got, we talked about Egypt a little bit, and we didn't even really talk about Iraq and Syria and Lebanon and that whole area, but let me just, let's let's go over, uh, again, uh, a lot of the farming in Europe, one of the problems is that the population center has basically been around in this Amsterdam, right? It's basically right in here is where the main population is. So the farms have basically come around the edge of that. Then actually France becomes a vital part of that. But there's so much winemaking being done in France that you kind of wonder, are they actually even making having real food there? So there's actually a whole not, not a whole lot of farmland there. But let's go back to the United States just because that's an interesting case. So you can see what the farmland looks like in terms of style. Now, I'm familiar with the Midwest. Um, but I'm going to go down to the Memphis area because that's some of the best, most valuable farmland in the United States. So you can see here, um, this is Memphis, and then all the farmland basically. So you can see these swirls kind of going with the, the rivers, but definitely much more square approach to the farmland um, in the United States. So. Anyway, uh, and definitely the Mississippi River being a big part of that. Um, and then California also being really vital. Um, and it gets even more, the corn the corn of the Midwest is kind of scary. <clears throat> um, but you can look at here and see just it's all squares just everywhere. So um, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's kind of amazing, right? But you should definitely know about it, that there's a lot of farming happening just to feed you. So... Uh, Let's zoom back out here. So, so uh, there's still a big question because, uh, you know, remember, uh, this small little section fed. They're so productive here with 100 million people. That section feeds 100 million people. Now, when you have 11 billion people, billion people on the planet, uh, you know, do the math. So... Uh, you know, you need 10, 100 times that. So uh, that becomes a lot of land. Uh, now, here in Central America, 
is a very a vital piece right in here. So, so uh, I'm gonna have to try to end this conversation here. So I wanted to just make sure as all to try to get make sure every last detail was definitely covered um, in this discussion. Uh, in case you've missed it, uh, any of the details. So. First of all, what in the heck are we talking about? So we're talking about uh, the most important farmland in the world, right? Uh, in terms of both population uh, and risk, because it's right on the border of the Middle East. Right? So basically we looked at this section of farmland here and we noticed essentially that that farmland piece of the puzzle right here this is the most densely including china as well uh, but there's just a huge amount of population here and a huge amount of farmland along this river as well as this river um, here and you can see how this even goes back deep in follows the river essentially in china as well and china's actually moved quite a lot of their farmland up into this corner and i've been completely surprised uh just to study this region actually it's almost half of what china farms you can see how subtle the the farmland is in korea and japan so this basically means that korea and japan so it's not only china's feeding themselves but they're also feeding japan korea and even asia right so it's really everyone's trying to contribute to help other places and you can see how africa is just starting to do their farmland in west africa and it's a scary thing because we were talking about, I tried to talk about the jungle first. So the wildlife discussion, I mean, we can't just do all blue on this. We have to save uh, this definitely for wildlife. So here you can see in South America is actually more developed in terms of farmland. And the sad part about South America is actually with Argentina is actually this is all cattle grazing land. So it's not even farmland for people. It's cattle. I'm a vegetarian. But anyway, so uh, there's still uh, some hope there, but it's really getting bad because look at how close we're getting into the jungle here. So you see United States, we can't really farm out in the mountains, but we have kind of farmed all the way up into Canada, even to the point of it getting too cold to farm. So uh, just a lot. And actually the uh, East Coast, even down into Florida, still has quite a lot of farmland left. But... Uh, again, I wanted to really look at the wildlife side of this at some point, so and really express that India has done a really bad thing as well as China, uh, but maybe even worse in India than in China because the south coast of China still has quite a lot of wild land, it looks like. But I'm a little bit confused about these maps, and I don't trust this map entirely because as I looked into details uh, particularly in hong kong hong kong is actually the worst place in the world for farming they have the fewest there's there's data for the no number of farmers per capita and hong kong is the worst in the world and um, so essentially this whole region of hong kong uh but there is some green hills here but it's extremely difficult to farm on some of these areas uh but if you look We'll try to fall out the Pearl River here and just look in this valley region and see what the situation is. So you can see it's basically mountainous. So that basically has deterred China and helped with the wildlife situation um, quite a bit. Um, and, and the same thing goes in India. They farmed everything that's flat. So all the flat land has been farmed except for even up in the hills. But the problem is that these have actually become separate countries. We have Nepal, Bhutan and even Myanmar, and Myanmar is actually vital uh, for saving for the wildlife. This whole coastland all through here is very vital, I would say. Uh, it's perhaps the most important area in all of that region, uh, this coastline. So uh, just because of the rain and other things, look at what's happened down in Thailand. It's actually become major tourist destinations and big cities like Singapore. You probably heard a lot about Singapore. Well, Singapore occupies the tip of that. Um, and 
anyway, so we started this conversation with food, and actually, uh, we wanted to try to get to the point where high density housing is probably the right way to go. And I had this really awesome conversation with a Native American guy. Uh, he was a local indigenous guy last night, and or it was maybe the night before. And you know, we were just talking on on the street, and he was telling me he was homeless and struggling with some things and I was like man do you need some help you can maybe stay with me or something uh, and uh, but really we, we both came to the awesome conclusion that there maybe there should never be another plot of land developed on planet earth and maybe and if you're listening to this call your friends build above their house so if you know where a house is anywhere on the planet let's look at Singapore for instance build up right and we can also farm up uh and there's plenty why why this is this could be farmland but this also is wildlife habitat so it's a very delicate problem because some of these islands maybe need to be entirely preserved for wildlife you can see these islands out here you know there looks like they're even trying to convert this into farmland so you can kind of see some of the scorching here of how this is all farmland so that's been taken over, guys. Uh, but where are the animals going to live? So they pretty much live in the water, but even there is being completely questioned with the fishing. So, uh, But Singapore is a very vital discussion in this whole thing. And I would say it's really an alternative discussion. Like We've been talking about capital of Earth, and a lot of people argue things about Singapore. Um, but uh, it really is different concept uh it probably should be off in this separate region so in in the sense of the himalayas uh it's just a different topic entirely um but certainly one that i'm very interested in and i definitely would recommend looking at that uh but going back to the united states because so many people are probably listening from the united states or even outside the united states on this discussion uh, but if you look at the United States, uh, you know, we, I live up here, which was actually heading up into Alaska. So you can see these huge mountain range snow, uh, but I live right down in here. So this whole point here, you know, I, I was trying to find reasons, you know, there's Yellowstone out here and some other things. So everywhere you live, there's really important things to be thinking about, um, a friend of mine is coming to visit from Florida, uh, but uh, you can see the importance of Florida here um, because of the farming actually here, but also how it heads into the wildlife area. So anyway, the dog was barking at me. I'm going to end this conversation immediately here and kind of like actually switch entirely the subject to uh, wildlife soon. So uh Basically, yeah, so we need to really uh, be cautious here because uh, if we look at this map of our planet, I'll go to this one more time. Dang, man, we have taken up a lot of farmland. So, and a lot of the areas are desert, like I was mentioning, or even too cold. Like as you get far north here, it's too cold for animals. It's too cold for even farming. So basically these areas here in the jungle and also the Congo, are extremely important as well as Southeast Asia and for the wildlife section so of the discussion um, but anyway I'm really sorry uh, hopefully it, this is like uh, hopefully hopefully there's a uh, some ways to uh, work with some other people on this um, my friend was really struggling and um, there's just so many other people too um, another friend I, I know in Africa and then another guy in Africa and just so many people all over the place that are even embarrassed to even talk about how bad the situation is and I was knowing you know one of the things I wanted to mention if you're just sitting there tonight listening to this um, you know it can be pretty bad you can be stuck in your bed you can just be absolutely completely zonked out about the situation being just absolutely terrible um, and I definitely understand uh, how bad things can be um, but what I would say is this is definitely depend on good things in your life and try to um, 
<coughs> have a balance of everything. Uh, <coughs> anyway, and I just wanted to last say thanks a lot, um, and let me know uh, what other ideas we can uh, take a look at. Um, and this was all because some couple of my friends had problems, and I wanted to look into the details a little bit more. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot more work to do. Uh, this is only the tip of what we need to do in terms of actually getting food uh, to some people. So, uh, and I hope that we can uh, get your problem solved as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try to get this as done as possible uh, in terms of discussion. So I wanted to go through a last little check on the most important new farms on our planet. So basically these are the regions uh, that I've been studying uh, that are new farms. So for example, in Africa, in South America, in Southeast Asia, Caribbean, Florida, and also Bangladesh. Uh, so I wanted to look at that really quickly uh, not necessarily quickly but try to get it covered as quickly as possible these are the most important critical urban farms this is a topic that I would like to extend extensively um, there are billions of people on our planet there are millions of cities with millions of people uh, so uh, and basically look at where those cities are specifically and how that relates to the wildlife so this kind of gets into some uh, really important details so here's like the population center map of our planet also done by the FAO so uh, and then basically looking at uh, those farmland regions so I wanted to really get into this in detail so this uh, because so many people have to live in a city uh, to survive so that's why it's urban farms uh, and basically this is an astronomy farm so these are areas like we talked about and I didn't even circle this here in Afghanistan for instance or uh, the Himalayas but basically these are regions that potentially could help us understand how to farm off of earth so I have a whole separate discussion on that topic uh, including how to get food to Antarctica and even the North Pole here so and how that may even relate to Australia here you can see Sydney Sydney's position relative to Antarctica uh, and just a number of different places about how farming might work off of Earth and how that would be related to now here is the space launch facility so an example of how uh, the farming might work uh, near the uh, actual place that they're trying to launch get us out get us to outer space so here's the actual diagram you can see the road the different uh, launch facilities that they have uh, for that as well as the number of launches that we've had into outer space uh, and kind of looking at the food situation for that as well as a major astronomy observatory this is the ESO uh, that we talked about uh, potentially so the point that we're trying to make here is although this is the ESO is down here in Chile this region that region is actually high altitude very similar to guess where the Himalayas right <laughs> guess where right over here so uh, that's an interesting discussion looking at that so uh, and then also looking at some very mysterious islands uh, and how we would potentially connect the uh, what I'm calling the east and west and I actually flipped this uh, on purpose here so uh, and you can see how this whole region actually heads into the Middle East here which is actually mainly the desert region so we actually have these two uh, opposite corners uh, interestingly um, I dropped some dishes took a picture of it but uh, and then some wind stuff so this is a definite one that I need to expand extensively because how we're thinking about farming in outer space is super important topic. Um, and again, that also the urban farming stuff. Uh, 
I wanted to go through this uh, later, but I'm going to try to do it right now so you can just get a quick overview of what this document is all about. Um, and so the population <clears throat> gives us some clue, but <clears throat> you can see not too many people in so South America, <clears throat> especially up here in Russia. It's actually almost impossible to live up in this region, but there's actually quite a population actually heading up in there in some in uh, some instances, <clears throat> maybe even more than Canada, actually. So that's an interesting discussion to have. This is a super awesome map. If you have time to look at this map in detail, uh, each one of these pixels represents a different type of crop, and the USDA has done a great job of outlining that. It'd be nice to get this for the entire planet. Um, as well as some crop diagrams and you can see this is the crop explorer per crop um, it's also a really cool map to look at um, for this so this is again looking at urban farms uh, I tried to look at uh, the international visitors as well as large cities so this is the world tourism ranking so because a lot of people as they travel may actually want to look at a farm so I wanted to look at that specifically uh, with uh, travel and farming. Uh, so basically that whole section I definitely wanted to get really detailed on. And I tried to cover that topic a little bit uh, a little bit in the other document. Um, but anyway, and then here's kind of getting into uh, actually race and farming. So looking at different types of races in the United States and you can see in the south actually some of the best farmland may actually be African American right so in Florida and you actually have some Asians actually out here in California um, and actually how California if you've gone to the grocery store recently there's a lot of food from California and how a lot of that makes be Asian so there's actually definitely certainly a lot of farmland here uh, in the Midwest that is probably white people so and you can see Hispanic actually being down here in Florida uh, New Mexico and some regions like that so that's an interesting topic um, and then specifically Australia you can see on the south side I went into detail because this is urban farms I looked at specific regions so you can see here in the western coast of Australia south part of Australia it actually is not near Sydney Sydney's over here and yet the farming is primarily on the western side of Australia and you see same thing in Africa there's definitely a little pocket right here this is Nigeria and you can see Ethiopia so it's not at all what you'd anticipate and then here you can see up in China uh, you can see how that works there and then you can see specifically in Europe the farming there so I needed to really go into more detail here about that but uh, this is the types of vegetables produced in the United States and you can see uh, what's going on with that um, as well as some uh, harvested acres by county um, and then there's soybeans I think I got some price maps wheat actually primarily being in Montana and North Dakota uh, and then just the overall farming map for the United States as well as South America so you can see that big chunk here so there's a lot more details that I needed to do per city so I wanted to start primarily with the big picture um, but this document is going to be expanded extensively to look at uh, specific cities uh, in that discussion so one of the reasons that we're actually looking at this tonight is because guess what the population is most in India and China and it's actually right in this corner so that's why we started with Pakistan because it's basically mostly populated and also heavily dense in farmland so that is definitely going to be part of that previous discussion that we just had um, but it's uh, part of that so uh, yeah and then this this is actually it's kind of a slightly different topic because the most important new farmlands on earth are different than the most because some of these farmlands is actually getting close to the jungle right so this stuff is actually more of the like like let me just put it right here obvious dangerous farms. sorry dangerous farms 
I'll put it in red. Dangerous farms. Okay, so these are very dangerous farm areas where it's actually super important to really be cautious about it. So uh, this topic, I looked at right here down in Paraguay. There's this idea that Paraguay, this is, the, I've been to the capital of Paraguay, and Paraguay is actually the trade center of South America. You can see all the farmland in here. I need to zoom in and look at that really in detail. So I want it, there's all these areas near the jungle that need to be looked at. So, and then here you can look at uh, all the way down here in Mozambique, looking at specifically Zambia, Mozambique, and Tanzania. Uh, how to get that farming out of the jungle and over to here. So that's why this is a new farm There's not really a whole lot of farms in this region, but maybe there should be so uh, well, Let me retell this I, I Don't even know how to say it so it's like there maybe should be farms in the region But there are new regions that are kind of also dangerous. So I don't know how you want to say that But that's what the topic is um and you can see the soil map. So obviously this is the jungle in here. There's some of that jungle soil in here. Maybe you should split that with the wildlife, you know, and also uh, farm some of that. So you, it's much better to be farming here than it is there. And besides, you get to be right on the ocean front or even by the lake. Uh, but the problem is that the wildlife has all been kicked out to this region. So actually the people are living up in there. So huge, huge topic. Uh, I don't even have all the slides to descri describe all the details, but there's just hundreds of things. Now, here's the fishing map. So, again, I didn't really even talk about this, but most important farms on Earth, actually, there's a lot of farming being done in the ocean. Look at this. Like, this is completely packed with boats. So that's a whole separate topic there. Uh, and then you can see that there's cropping... The purple zone is actually three times a year. At that point, you're actually getting down to sand. Like, you could over farm, way over farm in some of those regions. And this is kind of dangerous for me to show some of these maps because, I don't know, you, you got to be careful about the over farming. So, and then the river system map is super important um, because the most important farms often are near the most important rivers. And that's why we looked at here, you can see. We looked at this river system primarily in India, but there's actually two. There's this one here, and then even a kind of a third, and these guys out here as well. So, But we looked at this river channel here, um, but that's certainly another river channel to look at. And essentially down in Thailand, and also here in Myanmar, is a super important river system. And then here you can see the entire river system from Mississippi all converging. And that's why we looked at... Uh, just a moment ago, we looked at the uh, Memphis area uh, as being super important. And then here's the Amazon and kind of how you can separate this. You know, this is why Argentina is so important in the farming land area because all that river system actually pulls out of Argentina. And even this river goes into there. And there's actually not a whole lot of rivers outside the Amazon except for like this one and that one. Making it pretty difficult to farm right there anyway i'm really sorry about this conversation i'm just really trying to help out as much as possible and as quickly as possible uh with the situation overall so uh and i think i had one more that i really wanted to show but i didn't um i think it was this one the children's farms yeah so uh if you're just trying to have fun and you want to do like a quick farm thing for kids these are some ideas and this also gets into the tourism, like, because I said tours here. You just uh, put that in a different color somehow. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, let's put it in red. So, basically, tours means you can travel somewhere and then kind of take a look at a farm at the same time and learn from it. So, this is the United States, the main regions of the farming uh, kind of picked out. Uh, and then the schedule. So if you're trying to do uh, farming, you might have three different uh, time periods. Let me just make this a little bit bolder so you see. So basically, uh, there is different phases, right? So you can have uh, the planting season, the growing season, or the harvesting season. And there's three different tours 
uh, for that. You really should set up three. You got to see all three f parts, and you might want to do it. Un unfortunately, maybe at different locations, uh, but it's kind of nice to do it at the same spot. So, anyway, I, I just wanted to re-emphasize, man, I got some friends that are really struggling right now, and I'm really scared even to publish some of this stuff because, man, it's really bad right now. So, we got to get this solved immediately for food. Um, so, and some of that involves tourism and even bringing food where you go. And that's a whole separate discussion. Now, here is the major probably should copy this and put it on the other document uh, critical urban farms yes yeah, so I don't know why this isn't here so uh, so yeah so this this is the population map here and basically these are the major cities of the world and looking at we looked at that red region right there which is essentially New Delhi and Pakistan there's also some other regions out all around here that definitely should be looked at. So we just looked at one of those. Um, and definitely, that's not the only way to look at the farm system, uh, how the weather patterns work. You may want to look at that as well. And I've tried to look a little bit into the weather patterns to see the details on that. So uh, as well as the sun details. So there's actually a lot of sunspots and cycles with the sun uh, they can help us understand so uh, anyway and then here's some actual value of the crops in the United States uh, if you're interested in looking at that um, and then we looked primarily tonight at this region in India but you can see there's definitely some regions that we probably shouldn't be farming in and even in Africa I kind of outlined some of those there uh, but I needed to go into some more details. It was just easier to draw a picture than to actually say something. I'm really sorry for this discussion. I'm going to try to get done with this totally as soon as possible. But uh, basically, I tried to draw some pictures to make it look a little bit better than uh, things. And then I put every single possible rain map here. So you can see every month I put the number here of the month. So you can see certain months have certain details on the rain. Uh, and then uh, here is a global global perspective of the uh, shipping of the farm. And I think you can click on this. Uh, maybe not. So there's another document I think I have for that. So, But basically this goes through uh, the details. And I think I've already discussed this before. Exactly what's going on for farming in every country around the world uh, in terms of how they may even should work with each other. So, uh, And then... This was a very detailed discussion of the river systems that I wanted to get into. Uh, specifically, you can see some ideas on what we might do. And you can see here is East Africa and West Africa, and then how we can kind of maybe avoid the Congo question. And then here's in India, you can kind of see, actually, even though most of the farm is going here, we actually need to push that further down the river and get the wildlife back into these starts of the river sections so that was a huge discussion to have that got me uh, started looking more on the wildlife and then here's on the China side you can see definitely out on the Shanghai Yangtze actually going quite being quite exotic and heading back into the mountains here as well as the Yellow River and going through uh, excuse me, Beijing um, and just a whole bunch of other topics so anyway uh, I hope uh, this has helped you out. Uh, I wanted to even go through all the details. There's so many details in here. So I wrote down a lot of details here to look at so you can take a look at that. Uh, and I have just gone through so many things here. So, uh, and I hope to try to do this some nights like tonight and just help out with some free time and look at what we can do. So anyway, um, Thanks again, uh, and I really wanted to say, uh, you know, thanks to all the people that have helped me out. There's been uh, just a couple people, actually, you know, and it started with just one person just saying, hey, I needed help, and I tried to help them out, and then it became another person. So, uh, and then uh, I hope <laughs> as soon as possible I can try to help even more. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you later, and have a nice day.